Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with week four of the weekly premium challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Yes, I just want to check to see if I did this one. I always like to see a problem that I haven't done yet. Uh, today's problem is 2093, minimum cost to reach city with discounts. A series of highway connect N cities from zero to N minus one. Oh, guys. So, yeah, you're giving a 2D integer away highway. So you have the city connection and the tow. Okay. And also, I guess right versa just means bi-directional. Uh, this is, a, technically speaking, this is a little bit unclear if you wanted to go back and forth on the same highway, but I guess that doesn't make sense for the shortest path. Okay, so wait, I think someone mentioned this on my Discord, but... Uh, But um, anyway, yeah, um, so we have, was it K or discounts? I call it just K, K, K discounts to use. Um, the, the, the basic idea is just to, my watch is telling me to stand. What is going on? Hmm. Uh, the basic idea is kind of, it's kind of funky uh, to say it out loud because it is something that I think a lot of people who whom uh, practice a lot of uh, lead code they honestly this this is a, a an immediate answer um, and this is why this is only a medium but it's still uh, something that is kind of tricky to come up with by yourself when you're you're starting out or if you have seen this problem for the first time or something similar for the first time but the idea is kind of also useful in dynamic programming as well it is basically just creating another dimension or creating another like copies of graphs uh, each graph just a little bit different i think the um just a little bit different, but not using the discount. I think the so the discounts uh, is as a dimension. Uh, discounts is less than five hundred, but it doesn't even shouldn't matter that much. Maybe hmm, maybe it does, but um, because the, the, you can you will because there are a couple of observations that make you kind of because um, if you kind of sloppy about the proof that. Uh, you know, this can be n square log n or something, which is maybe a little bit too slow, possibly. Uh, the constraints are actually pretty small. Uh, well, it's not a general graph, uh, maybe at least not a general graph of size n. Uh, for small graph, it could be general or complete or whatever, right? Um, so the, the other thing is just making discounts a dimension. Um, the thing that makes this work is making a couple of observations, as I mentioned. One is that you will never take the same road twice because you the, there'll never be a shortest path where you go back and forth in this particular setup, right? Maybe there's some other graphs where that's the case, but in this particular uh, setup, there isn't. And, and um, you could probably figure out how to prove to yourself that that is true. Uh, I don't know how to... <laughs> I mean, you could probably do, do a proof by contradiction, uh, and I think that you could probably get there. And because of that, you will never use the discount on the same road more than once. Um, so those things kind of go together, and as a result, then, um, yeah. And then the other thing is, uh, as a result of all these constraints, the shortest path is, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I always say, which I don't know if people teach it this much in, in algorithms class or whatever, but it's something that uh, when you construct a shortest path from a node, you actually also uh, construct a shortest path spanning tree, right? And when you create a sh shortest path spanning tree, uh, well, what is in that word? Or what is in that name? There's shortest path. Okay, fine. You know, there's spanning uh, and there's a tree. So tree is and spanning uh, kind of go together for this particular problem and that it just visits all the nodes, right? And in a tree, the longest path, the diameter is just going to be at most O of N. You can think about that as a linked list, right? Um, like if a linked list, then... You know, so uh, th th there are other ways to prove this. Th that's just my back of the head uh, lazy proof. But th it's just another way to say that the shortest path will have at most n uh, edges, right? So then all these kind of put together um, allow us to kind of figure out um, 
you know, just kind of uh, constrain the upper bound of the cost. Because uh, the, the thing about creating a new dimension, usually in this case, lifting this can up to be another dimension. You can think about it as the other dimension um, is that it creates a lot of, um, because basically you're creating another dimension. So you're adding another um, layer of complexity, right? Not just not just like in thinking, but literally like it'll cost like an extra O of N, O of K, O of something, uh, maybe even N squared or something like this, right? Depending on what the, you know, the problem is. Um, and as a result, it just gets more and more expensive the way you do this. And this comes up more in dynamic programming. You just kind of finagle the map so that it kind of uh, be fast enough often. But that is what it is, right? So, yeah. Uh, and, and that is why I explain all those other things that makes this uh, nice, uh, combine the constraints so that we can uh, give it a go. And, you know, to be honest, I, you know, I know that's how you do it, but... We'll go over the complexity later, but these are things that are off my mind. Because um, in that world, then, then yeah, it's going to be just like, you know, uh, N log Y or something like this, right? Um, but N is not this N. N is the number of nodes, but that number of nodes is not a, not every node in that thing is going to be needed to be reached. Right, so yeah. Okay, um, all that said, let's go. So the idea here is just that, you know, uh, it's gonna be just Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, and there are a couple of variations, of course. Um, you know, there's the the heap version and the non-heap version. I'm gonna use the heap version. But yeah, let's, uh, let's go, we're, we're trying to go. Uh, from zero to N minus one, okay. So then, yeah, so then we have start, right? Oh, let's set up the, high, uh, the edge, the adjacency list first, right? Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. and this is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, oops. Well, it is like very common stuff. I mean, you just have to do it a couple of times, and you kind of get used to it a little bit, right? So this is now you have an adjacent C list with the cost. Just have to be a little bit careful. And I've said this a little bit. You could also con convert this to a name tuple if you. You know, if you kind of feel like doing it that way. But yeah, and then now, um, our states, um, so we have a heap, right? So then now we want to uh, push heap. We want uh, the state of, um, well, the, the starting city, which is zero. And we have, oh, no, no, no that's not, the, the cost is going to be zero. The starting city is also zero, but the cost is zero. So that's first. And maybe the, the number of discounts, which is used, which is also zero. Okay, right? Uh, and maybe we do something like uh, keep a track of, and there are a couple of ways to do this, I think. But but I, I prefer a map for this one, right? So maybe like a, a distance thing, right? And then distance up. Uh, zero zero is equal to zero, right? Uh, and this is going to be just uh, the tuple that's inside, and maybe you know you could use an again name tuple, but this would be uh, city. Oops, and what did I say? Discount discounts used, right? So then now this is honestly uh, everything is just about to set up um, because after that it um, you know everything is pretty much uh, relatively standard. Dystro, you just have to, I mean, of course, you have to um, think about the implicit edges, but that's basically it, right? So now you have, what did I say it was? Uh, you have distance. Uh, and maybe I should, this should be distance this. Oops. So, uh, I'll just write D here. Uh, city and, uh, okay, fine. City and discounts used. All right, that, <laughs> that's okay, fine. Right. Uh, yeah, and here I think people don't. I, I think this one we. Uh, I sometimes I talk about it, sometimes I forget. But yeah, if this distance is uh, is if distance is greater than this, we continue. The the reason why this is this line is very important, and I think was one of the reasons why Q four or Q three or some one of the contests uh, kind of you know uh, uh, a lot of people fail from it 
it's because this now prevents you from relaxing the same node more than once. Because if you're not careful, then you can relax at the same node maybe n times or maybe over o of e times or something like this or some crazy expo uh, exponents. But but the, the, the idea is that, okay, I mean, th uh, this particular one is already kind of confusing so um, for this particular problem, so it's a little bit hard to visualize if you haven't done it yet. But you can think about a generic, gen generic, generic um, uh, dice drill where you only have the city and just ignore the discount for now. Um, if you have multiple paths to the same city, you don't. Only the first one matters, right? Because if if the current distance that we pop is greater than the best distance, well, you can think about all the all the extra paths that follow after it, it's going to be exactly the same, except for is that plus a constant. So we can never give you a better answer anyway. Um, which, of course, this observation is what leads to Dijkstra's algorithm, which is, of course, a greedy algorithm um, for that reason. Um, and also, um, there, there are really two ways to deal with what I said. One is, of course, what I just said with the, with, uh, the if statement, with the lookup. Um, the other which is more textbooky is just that when you have a heap, instead of just inserting things into the heap, you can, um, how do you say it? You can update the heap, right? Um, I think if you look at your um, your algo textbook, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm has an update heap or something like this. And and so, so, so there's only one instance of each city inside the heap, right? Uh, or something like this, right? Of the state. I mean, in this case, it's city, city and discount uh, used tuple of it, but that's the idea, right? Um, okay, now we have to uh, just process the edges, right? Uh, well, I guess the two things you can do, yeah, which is if city is equal to n minus one, then we return uh, distance. Because here, th the first time you see the city, you're basically done. Uh, because of Dijkstra, so if you be able to visit city, then you just return the distance. Uh, and I say distance because I'm just so used to calling everything a distance in Dijkstra, but I guess it actually is the cost, right? So you can think about the cost as the distance between the two nodes. Um, yeah, whoops, I just I just noticed that, that I've been doing that for a while. But yeah, okay. So then now we, yeah. Um, so then now we, we look at every edge, right? So for V, T in uh, adjacency list of the current city. Um, and then now the two things that, two choices that we can do, right? We could use a discount or we could not use a discount. So here, um, if discount used plus one is still less than discounts, that means that we have one to use, then we can, uh, what is the cost? The new cost, it, uh, the new cost of new distance, maybe just to be consistent, because otherwise it's just a little bit messy. It's going to be just distance plus the toe, but the toe is cheaper with integer division, right? And new discount used just uh, is equal to discounts used plus one, just for, you know, right? And then now we just have to look up the the, the distance to see if this is a, something that we can improve on, right? So if uh, and eh, v is the next city, which is maybe not super clear to be honest, but okay. If v new discounts used is in distances, and uh, or if it is not in distances, that means that we haven't seen it yet, so we could put in the queue or distances of uh, we new discount used if this number is greater than a uh, new distance then then that means that we have to update we have to put the new things in the queue so yeah so distances of you know we new discounts used is equal to new distance and of course as we said we put things in the queue so yeah we have h uh, we have the new city we we have the new this no new discount use and we have the oh i, I messed this up 
because I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, the, f the first index should be new distance, right? So yeah, because that's what we want to sort by in a min heap kind of way. And that's basically it. Um, you can maybe even put these in a helper function, uh, but yeah. And then you can also just in general not use a discount. Whether we have it or not, we don't have to use the discount. So we could, you know, rewrite it this way. Uh, right. And, you know, the, I, I could see that we can put this in a, <clears throat> in a for loop. So let's do it, right? So here we can kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, so then like maybe for new Eh, okay. Actually that maybe I'm just trying to prematurely optimize the code. So basically, yeah. Uh so let's do that and then we can do this if statement. Maybe the if statement should should be on a thing there. Like you could do a maybe heap add or something and that that'll be good. But yeah, uh but that's pretty much it. Right? And then you know, this loop will keep on going until we visit all the states and then we return negative one. If, if we cannot push new things to the heap, then we return negative one, which means that for some reason it's not possible. Uh, okay, all is that. Hopefully this works because if it doesn't, I just did a lot of stuff and embarrass myself, but it looks okay. Maybe I missed an edge case, but I'm a little bit lazy. So, so let's just YOLO submit. And yeah, uh, we got it and yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is just very basic Dijkstra and it's definitely a technique that comes up in competitive like once in a while. I, I think I want to say it actually doesn't come up that often only because I think too many people are aware of this idea. So it, it's not super uh, difficult, but definitely, like I said, if you haven't done it before, it can be tricky. So, you know, make sure you kind of think, think about how all these things together uh, fit together. Uh, where's the complexity here, right? So that's kind of the tricky part about this. And maybe I should have done that before submitting, but it's a little bit late. Uh, which is that, okay. Well, how many items are in heap, right? Um, eh, because we don't we, we don't branch off. You can say that it is roughly speaking equal to the number of states. And the number of states, of course, is going to be n times, let's say k for this count, then n times k, right? Uh, and each one of these, we do a couple of heap things. We do heap things here, heap things here, heap things here. So, um, and this is a little bit confusing to look at, but it, in aggregate, in the sum of all these, there are k times y number of edges, right? So, yeah, because y is the original number of edges that they you're given, but there are k versions of these because each one um, because there's just a lot of nodes, right? So it kind of, uh, it's a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, because each, because when you duplicate the graph, graph, you can see that, uh, this one is actually a new edge for each of the K variations, right? Almost like a multiverse type thing, but anyway. But yeah, but all these are in aggregate, right? So you don't have to worry about it that much, but it's going to be like, Roughly speaking, like I said, k times n times log of uh, kn, k times n, which can be pretty big. But like I said, a lot of those states are not actually um, possible just because, oh, this count is also lower. I, I forgot to mention it. But a lot of those states, like I said, are not actually possible because, um, yeah, hmm. I think actually, hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, yeah, so should be okay. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, this is a very good, um, I wouldn't say intro, but like maybe a, I don't know, like a, 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 after you get a little bit into Dystrus, then this is something that comes up quite a bit, or at least the idea of it. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everybody. Stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.